how great would it be to be able to search for a file through some kind of smart search and then just open it in whatever program is the default literally just type in what you want whatever file and it just opens in the default program how great would that be absolutely fantastic well there is a way and we're going to look at it today the great thing about this as well is it will be for x11 and wayland but the slight complication for those that use the Linux console like me is a particular application is not for the um, con Linux console so that will have to be a separate video do not worry that will be coming because of course I am all about the Linux console but reality is you also have to have the graphical environment it's just the way it is so we're going to deal with that first there are a few components to this so bear with but it shouldn't be too difficult so let's just start off then and look at the screen okay so what I'm looking at at the moment what you're looking at at the moment is my TTYSH script and as I said before about this probably best not to try and run this off of uh, my github um, site and download this but uh, it is what I use um, it's basically because of configuration file don't worry about that for now we might come back to this in the future but it has some nice little nuggets of stuff that I use that I'm going to incorporate into our little program that we're going to make so first off let's see what it's doing here so this function as you can see here fzfvim is effectively taking a search put it in putting it into um, fzf which is a fuzzy finder we'll just look at all these things individually just to give you a sense of of how they work um, and then it's opening it in vim okay best way to show you is just by doing so that's what we're going to do first of all though what we need to do is we need a certain program called xdg open and if I go here xdg open is part of the xdg utils what are the xdg utils they uh, are uh, official utilities for managing xdg mime applications what are xdg mime applications you can look at this all up I'll put it in the description there's quite a lot of stuff going on but all we're interested in is um, something called xdg open specifically okay and xdgb opens a file or a url in a user's preferred application so like i discussed earlier right so how do we get this well it's pretty simple all we need to do is open up a shell well open open up your terminal and make sure first of all um, of course that you have your database updated okay once you've done that then you want x DG utils. Now I have this installed, so I'm not going to reinstall it, but you will need that. Okay, so we'll just deal with that one first. We'll come back to the other steps because you will need FCF as well, but we'll come back to that. So, what shall we do first? Let's actually start making this thing. So, I'm going to do the first thing is putting it in a shell script and then we'll look at putting it in an alias okay so first of all let's actually go into we'll just make it here we'll just make it here. so I'm gonna go into vim and I'm just gonna call this uh, open dot sh okay right and then we want to do our crash bang and then you can do bin sh I mean if you want you can do bin bash but we just do bin sh oh sorry got to put the exclamation mark put the exclamation mark there we go okay so let's first of all make this executable so I need to do ch mod plus X and then that's going to be on the open.sh okay okay let's go back into this and so first of all let's show you um, what the find command does because if you look here this find and FCF are in a subshell okay 
So, first of all, now if you've watched my videos before, you know what a subshell is or whatever. So we're just going to do find. So the find command is a, is basically built into your Linux system, so you shouldn't need to install it. And we're going to put in this here, user. So user is an environmental variable will take your username. So for example, mine is testing on this computer. That's the path, okay? If you have your name, for example, so if I was James and I named my computer James, my, the user would be James, okay? I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense. So for example, for me, it's my directory um, is testing, okay? Because I want to look in home directory. So, but this is just user, okay? So that's dollar user. Hope this makes sense. And then we want uh, type F, okay? So if I just ran this, if I just ran this, so let's run this, okay? So I'm gonna put dot forward slash open. As you can see, it's effectively just spitting out all the contents of my home directory, which is in testing and in testing, okay? Hope that makes sense. Now, if you're looking at why we're we using the dash type F, so if I go into man finds, search for files in the directory hierarchy, specifically, we're looking for files because we're opening files. We're not necessarily opening directories. However, good thing with um, FCF, we can search via directories as well. So if I put in type, let's have a look. Okay, let's find, find it down here somewhere. If I'm doing this right. Okay, here we go. So dash type. Okay, and then these are the different types. So you can search by directory or find by directory. We're just looking for regular files because we're going to be opening regular files like JPEGs, video files, maybe website links. Okay, hope that makes sense. Right, so come out of that. So showing you what the find command does. Okay. So the next thing to do is to uh, get FCF, right? So FCF is fantastic. I uh, will show you the man file for FCF, a command line fuzzy finder. So if you want to install it, obviously, again, if you haven't done your SYU, make sure you've done that. You won't need to do it again if you've just done it. Um, and then do FCF. Again, I'm not going to install FCF because I have it already. Okay, so let's go back into our script so open right and then we're going to pipe the contents of find into just fcf okay and that will show you all the contents nice thing with fcf we can put in our own little prompt so that will show at the bottom of the screen so i'm going to do prompt um and we'll just call it like it says in the one above pick the file you want to open okay and then we'll just do that, and that should be fine. So if I do open.sh, as you can see, um, ooh, all right, there we go. So, as you can see, it's just looking through my home directory. Now, of course, it's included config. It's just con concluded everything, okay? However, if I start searching, so I start searching the Linux, you know, so it's starting to look through videos. I've got Linux, the fastest terminal on. The fast is the is X term the fastest terminal on Linux, and I hit enter. Now you can see what it's done here. It's it's basically spat out the output of of um, that directory and the, and where the file is. Okay, so how do you get that output or that basically that directory or sorry that path? So it's basically spitting out the path, okay? How do you get that path to be opened by the default program, whatever the file type is? So this is where we need our xdg open, okay? So we use xdg dash open, and then we put in whatever we want. So if we were gonna do this in, let's have a look, xdg open the links frame buffer, as you will see, there we go it's opening up in my web browser that's just what the default is set now if you want to set your defaults for what 
um, file type is opened with. So for example, if you want a JPEG to be opened with um, MPV, for example, you'll need to possibly change what is the MIME type, okay? So again, this will be left in the description. You can look into this. This tells you about the MIME types, how you set defaults. Um, there is also in the XDG utils that I'll put in here, you can um, set it here. Okay, so determine a file's MIME type. So if you want JPEGs, you can do XDG MIME query file type and see what it is. Um, if you want to change the default application, so you want MPV to be the default for image JPEG, you'd obviously put XDG MIME default and then you put MPV whatever dot desktop whatever it is and then image slash jpeg i hope that makes sense we will we will do more on this in the future but for this video i don't want to overload you we just know that it will open the default whatever the, whatever the default is for the moment okay so if i go back in here and i'm going to put in xdg because we want xdg to open the output of the find and FCF okay but we need to put this in a subshell I believe because we're piping the output okay we're piping now I'm not going to go into piping but it's basically we're taking the um, sorry we're not piping so we're opening a subshell it's doing its own process to get to spit out the output the path effectively to the file that we want and then we want to open it with XDGB, uh, XDG open. Okay. Sorry if there's quite a lot here to take in, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, so we want to obviously put a comma, dollar. And if you're wondering why I put a um, quotation around the dollar, it's just good practice. I know maybe subshells aren't. Uh, the biggest problem with this but I, I tend to where possible put um, a quotation around the subshell or obviously a variable okay so I'm sure some will send the comments don't bother but whatever who knows okay and then you do close the bracket of the subshell and close the quotation for the first quotation okay does that make sense I hope that makes sense so what is this going to do so let's find out Okay, right, so this if I put the Linux frame buffer is magic. Okay, there you go. Now, what if I put, um, what if I put, so for example, um, let's make this a bit smaller. What if I did the MPV shot? So that's a screenshot of MPV. Okay, so if I run this script again, and I put MPV shot, it's doing something, and it's opening in Brave. Why is it opening in Brave? I don't know. That's just what the default. I haven't set the defaults, and then there you go. You can view the image if I make this bigger. Okay, so that's the default. That's what it's opening my image file in. Okay, now you see how it's working. So what else have we got? So let's, uh, what have I got in uh, scripts? So let's, let's try on that. So if I do again, open, and this is where you can put directories. So you could put scripts, so you dash scripts. Again, you probably don't even have to put the, sorry, the slash scripts, it will understand, but you can see I'm starting to fill in directory information, okay? I'm saying, I know it's in the scripts folder, and I wanna open this new updater file now it's interesting this has actually asked me what do you want to open it with so I'm being given an option here just the way it is maybe there isn't a default so we're just going to pick we're going to pick vim okay if it allows me and there you can see vim has been selected to open that um, new update script how fantastic is that? And you could have set its default. I don't know if it set its default. Now, again, we will look at changing the defaults, but let's uh, not worry about that now. You can look at the information and you can look at how to do that. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is um, we're going to alias a command, okay? So 
For example, if I hit open, open is not a command, so I know I can use that. And that's just a nice, obvious um, name for an alias. Okay, so we're going to put this in our bash RC. So the bash RC loads when you load as a user or whatever your bash RC. You can look up what the bash RC does. We've sort of covered this before. So how am I going to get this into the bash RC? So I'm just going to go cat. Oh, uh, where is it? I'm going to go cat open.sh and then I'm just going to direct the output. Remember to double forward bracket, otherwise it will overwrite the file. And then I'm just going to do dot bash rc. Okay. And if I go in my dot bash rc and I go to the bottom, as you can see, I'm just deleting that um, crash bang because I don't not need that. All I need is this. So if I do alias and then we'll say open equals and then hopefully that should famous last words should work we'll find out otherwise I could maybe alias the script but that's fine right let's see what happens so I'm going to do source bash rc dot bash rc okay and then if I type open how great is that? And then I could, again, I could do the Linux frame buffer or X-term. Now, you're probably thinking, why? So there you go. Literally, that's how magnificent that is. So, from a very simple bit of um, shell scripting, using subshells and a couple of programs, all from the command line, you've got a search tool to a um, a list tool to give you all of the files that you you know lazily search let's say that automatically open in whatever program is on your desktop in the graphical environment of course but do not worry in the future we will delve into the Linux console and how to do it or how I will do it so um, I think that was just a nice nice way to start with it's not too much to overload you if you um, found that a bit scary I don't know but I hope just follow those instructions you'll have a nice little selector there I would say anyway um, so I think we'll, we'll leave it there and just to say thank you very much for getting me over 1000 subscribers very unexpected and very kind of you people who are following me I hope you're enjoying these videos I hope they're useful um, and I hope it's just a nice little distraction if you just want some uh, Linux related stuff I don't know I'm not exactly sure what people want on this channel but I'm obviously doing enough to uh, keep some kind of fan base so from six subscribers to seven now I think that's fantastic thank you very much I joke I joke thank you to the thousand plus who have, who are following me Anyway, so uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. And again, if you haven't subscribed, you can do the fake YouTube thing as you'll find out on my channel. You can comment, you can like, and of course you can subscribe. So um, thanks again, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.